shit, we missed it. Look at the pig. Do you see it? That's what you see, is it? Oh my gosh, he's in the trees now. He just crossed the road. That's good to know. Oh, he's gone. Shit, I didn't get my camera on. You see, he saw it. Yeah, I know, I saw it. I saw it. I know. I know pigs are dangerous. Yes, they are. I don't know what this is. I'm just driving around. Look at this. Welcome, historic... Welcome historic fish hatchery. Self pay station. What? What the heck? Look at this. It's so cute. See, you've been in the Rio Grande, you've been in the Mississippi, you've been in the Missouri. <laughs> I think you've been in the Mississippi. Huh. So this whole area here used to be the town of about 3,000 people that was built just for building the dam. So the families of the people who came here to work on the dam settled here and there are some remnants left over. What I stayed on last night is the fish hatchery, one of the fish hatcheries, there's several. And they needed fish hatcheries because I think during building the dam, the reservoir levels kept fluctuating, going up and down causing spawning issues with fish so fish weren't surviving so they built the fish hatcher hatcheries to oh there's a word for it you guys who fish probably know the word but basically to make babies and put babies and incubate them basically totally slaughtering the real terminology so that you know once they got to a uh, stage where they could live in more diverse circumstances they would release them back into area rivers and lakes does that make sense because <laughs> i totally slaughtered the explanation but you know what i mean they needed the fish hatcheries to basically incubate um you know i don't i think that's the right word to help them grow to a sustainable uh, age and level where they could um survive the challenging environment of the changing reservoir so here i am I'm walking this morning this is the day use area of where I camped. Some of the old buildings from the settlement remain. All right, yeah, this is one of the old buildings that still remains. They say some of the buildings out here, and last night I walked up by an old jail. They say some of the buildings out here date back to the to 1907. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah, fish hatchery. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. 
Wow. Wow. Wow, this says private property. Somebody lives here. In 1902, Congress passed the wow. Newlands Reclamation Act, which authorized the Rio Grande Project to provide power and irrigation to South Central New Mexico and Western Texas as a Bureau of Reclamation undertaking. And construction began on Elephant Butte Dam in 1911. To accommodate the dam's construction, crews built and improved roads and constructed a Bureau of Reclamation office, water tanks, worker camps, a machine shop, a power plant, and, and, and a hospital. The really old sign back where I came in said gift shop and all kinds of stuff down here. And a local that I talked to said it used to be a state park, but uh, they couldn't keep it up. It kind of stands out with some of the state parks in the state. So it's a, it seems to be a pretty depressed state. Um, where I stayed, so funny, I stayed, I'm on the southern end of Elephant Butte Lake where the Rio Grande runs out. My other camp that I just left was on the northern end of Elephant Butte Lake where the Rio Grande runs in. So I've been on both sides of it now. And, uh, you know, I was out there, it didn't look like State Park was really maintaining it anymore. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be a theme a little bit in some of the state parks. Oh, look at there's a uh, stone walls. Oh, a few of them. Can you see them? Oh, wow. So I really like this area. Truth or consequences. Like I said yesterday, quirky and you know, I kind of like a little bit the depressed feel. You know why I like it? Because it means development hasn't come in and changed it yet. So you still have some remnants of the past, you know? I mean, even though it's a little depressed, you kind of get a feel for what it used to be. The wind is bad, I know, so I'll be quiet right now. Wetlands act as sponges, controlling flood water, slowing soil erosion, and acting as nature's kidneys to help maintain water quality. But they drain them in the past, believing they bred disease, of course. <laughs> this is cool. You know, part of the depressed part of it, I love old stuff. I love being able to just walk around a piece of history. Like, you know, this is my thing, like ghost towns, right? I like it. So I think we're on the road that I walked out a little bit last night, just above my camp, past the jail. So I think there's going to be some things. So there is a javelina here. Uh, last night when I was driving in, I tried to get a picture of it. I don't know if I did. I thought it was a pig, but it's a javelina. A local came by last night because Sadie was barking at it. I didn't see it. She was barking out the window. And a uh, local on Jeep yelled, Javelina! And a local that came by this morning. Oh, look at this. Oh. Beautiful. Roll. So a local came by this morning. Uh, he stopped because he needed his, he wanted his dog to run with Sadie. His dog needed the exercise. Older and really big, overweight. And we talked for a long time. He's the one who told me that this used to be a state park. He said it's a javelina and her cubs, her babies. I don't know what they're called. Uh, which is not good for Sadie. I looked up last night to see if javelinas were a uh, danger to dogs. And the javelina's number one predator is a coyote. So they would normally run from a dog. And that's what the guy said. He was like, there's no way a javelina would catch Sadie. And, uh, but she will stand ground, her ground to protect her baby and they can be vicious and they don't usually attack people either. Of course, what I read is the only, the only javelina attacks on people. Hey, let's go this way. Look at that. So you have the beautiful view behind me. The only javelina attacks on people are when they're trying to feed them. Don't feed the wildlife. Just don't. Sadie girl. And, uh, he also said that, uh, the javelinas pretty much only come out at night, late afternoon and night. So, Wow. Hear the birds. 
So last night when I was looking, when I was doing a little research, so this is an old fish pond. They built, yeah, this is man-made, you can see it. Recycled ponds. In the 40s and 50s, ponds like this were built to be used as fish nurseries. After the hatchery closed, the ponds sat dry. Without the hatchery, they were of no use. Today, we, today a new use has been found. In the 1990s, the state park allowed water to flow into the ponds again, and many animals quickly found a home. Even with the big lake just a, few, a short flight away, some water birds, including coot and merganser, have eagerly taken advantage of this oasis in the desert. Huh. Yeah. It's very dry here. Wow. This is nice. During its construction, the dam was the largest irrigation dam ever built, except for the Aswam Dam in Egypt. The jailhouse is one of the few buildings remaining from the time the Elephant Butte Dam's construction. Look at the tiny barred windows and the size of the building. This had four cells. That's the jail <laughs> from the dam town. Four cells! And the only entrance is in the front. Holy crap. Today, all the remaining structures from the dam construction and the work of the Civilian Conservation Corps are in the National Register of Historic Places. Kind of a cool area to camp and wander around. Can you hear the wind? It's actually howling. I'm really trying to pick up the wind howling and not just the wind against the mic. Listen. You know what it is, it's the power lines. cooked cauliflower, a little bit of uh, garbanzo fava flour, flaxseed egg, macadamia milk, nutritional yeast, hemp seeds, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and garlic. Oh, look at that. Let's see. I'm excited to see how they turn out. I've never made these before. I had to cook up some cauliflower last night. It's been in there a while and it didn't taste that good. So uh, I wanted to see what I could do with it. So I thought cauliflower pancakes. You know, like potato pancakes? Let's see. Wow, they're holding together really well. Oh, <laughs> do those look good or what? Look at those. Aren't they beautiful? All right, let's see how they taste. I forgot, I also put some frozen corn in them. They are really, really, really good. Oh my gosh. They taste like, kind of like mashed potato pancakes with corn in them, which is mashed potatoes and corn are like one of my favorite things ever. They're really good. You know what? And if I had some mayo, I might do like a chipotle lime mayo. I have a little, I think. I'm almost out. <clears throat> Did you know Best Foods makes a vegan? It's hard to find. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to find in my travels anyway, but sometimes I find it in the grocery store. Go, uh, like I don't usually see it in natural grocers. It's really good. I grew up on best foods, but yeah, a little bit of lime juice and chipotle. I'm going to see if I can make something. It's really good though. Just the way it is really. Put a little of that in. Let's see.
Okay, my own Chipotle lime mayo. It's so good. Mm -mm. Not bad lunch. That's quite good. No recipe or anything. I just threw a bunch of stuff together. I watch too many cooking shows. <laughs> Oh, this is my special tea, my hormone tea. Well, mixed with a lot of water because the second half of it doesn't taste very good. Okay. And what I mean is I have uh, one blend for the first two weeks of the cycle and then the last two weeks of the cycle is a different blend. The first two weeks are really good. The second one tastes kind of grassy. So I dilute it with a lot of water. <laughs> This tree, gosh, I can't, I can't pick up the the sunlight on the trunk on the bottom right. It's just beautiful. I see, girl. Is it, are you beautiful? It's really cool. My RV life, a break from work, and a different walk. Every day, like <laughs> a different scenery. Oh my gosh, this tree is just amazing. There's something about it. I love trees. Do you love trees? Look at this. Look at that. I love contrasts. You know, the contrast of the white against the sky. And it's old and gnarly. It's been through some stuff like me. Old and gnarly and been through some stuff. <laughs> totally, right? alive all right we decided to stay an extra day <laughs> I got up yesterday morning really had no idea if I was gonna stay or go and we went for a walk and I was so undecided but in the end I decided to stay and Sadie did better last night even though a neighbor just said that he saw a javelina right near our camp last night well probably before we went to bed because they were out for a walk but uh so yeah there's javelinas to be seen here somebody on the walk yesterday said there is a there's a bobcat that comes through and even a mountain lion uh she said last year they had seen remnants you know kills from mountain lions deer so beautiful i mean this is beautiful um it's the the fish hatchery it's not on i was just talking to the same guy yesterday he said he loves it here. He comes here uh, when he's passing through. It's not on any reservation system. So you do have to pay 10 bucks a night, but it's not on any reservation system. So nobody knows about it. It's been awesome. It's just been I th four people, I think, both nights I've been here. Uh, I got a new Class A behind me this morning. And the uh, night before was a, a Class C down here. And then the two guys at the end that I've been talking to. So, yeah. Really cool. Really pretty. Beautiful morning birds and the ducks the geese i think i saw some geese it's a great spot it is close to this road that goes up to the dam i think that goes towards elgin i think but it, there's not there's no traffic at night i don't hear anything at night and sadie didn't bark all night last night i think the first night she gets here she might be a little more on guard and she might have just been exhausted last night so we did sleep so we're taking off this morning and uh, moseying. I'm going to go into Las Cruces again. Um, supply up. I want to hit the I want to hit sprouts. And then I'm heading up to uh, 
I don't know where I'm going there from there, but uh, be sure to subscribe to find out if you want to tune in for all of my adventures and learning about how to live in an RV and anything else that comes up in my life. Uh, be sure to subscribe below. Double check your subscriptions. A lot of birds here. You know, in the desert areas like this where there's not a lot of water, they all congregate on the few water sources there are. Anyway, what was I saying? Check your, make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube unsubscribes people. Check your notifications, click the little bell, and go into your Google notifications and make sure those notifications are turned on so you never miss a thing. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. Bye! I'll leave you with the birds.